Good morning. It is Wednesday, July 13th. You are listening to the College Football Daily. I'm your host, Lance Glenn. So far in realignment, a lot of the talk has obviously been centered around the future of the Pac-12. You know, where will the remaining teams go? What will happen ultimately in the end to the conference? But one conference that really interests me when it comes to its future is the ACC, and, and one team specifically comes to mind, and that's North Carolina. So joining me now to discuss the Tar Heels and where they factor into this realignment talk is Greg Barnes of InsideCarolina.com. Greg, how are we doing? Thanks so much for coming on and joining me. Yeah, sure thing. Thanks for having me on, Lance. So, Greg, give me your reaction first and foremost, covering North Carolina to the original USC and UCLA news to the Big Ten, because I'm sure like a lot of us, one of your first thoughts was, okay, how is this team I cover? Or how is this team I like affected by this and any potential future realignment? So I guess what was just your initial impression when everything came out and the news and, and its effect ultimately on the Tar Heels? Yeah, I think really that the contrast in play between what happened you know, with USC and UCLA leaving for the Big Ten with what happened last year with the news at Texas and Oklahoma, that contrast was quite significant. And what I mean by that is when, when Texas and Oklahoma announced they were headed to the SEC, I think a lot of people, especially in ACC country, were like, wow, that's that's a big, bold step. That kind of speaks to how things are going eventually. Nothing we were really concerned with, but it's interesting nonetheless. Now that USC and UCLA have made this move, I think everybody around the ACC footprint has been like, hang on. Like, we've already seen one big movement. This is the second one. This snowball is, is rolling. Uh, and I, I think from talking with people around the ACC who cover a variety of programs, and you know, of course, people covering the UNC beat and people within the UNC community, uh, everybody's... I don't want to say panicked, but everybody's has a, a heightened awareness of, mm -hmm. okay, this is moving a lot quicker than we, we thought it would. We thought we had time. Um, and everybody's making sure they have everything covered behind the scenes so that they need to make a change at any level. They at least have an idea of what needs to take place. So really just kind of the, uh, the awareness of this is moving quicker than anybody thought it would is really what's taking place the last couple of weeks. And so, look, Big Ten teams obviously are in a comfortable position right now. SEC teams, the same. And the Big 12, they seem set on expanding more than they already have. At least you've heard rumors of them looking at some Pac-12 teams, potentially trying to bring them in. But the ACC, as a conference, it looks to be taking sort of a wait-and-see approach uh, of sorts. And I think that puts all ACC schools, not just North Carolina, but all of them in a tough position, right? Do they trust conference commissioner Jim Phillips and whatever his plan may be? Or do they say, hey, we need to look out for ourselves? You know, assuming that athletic director Bubba Cunningham has a UNC first approach, which we would all believe he would. I mean, that's his job. What kind of steps do you think he and his department are taking, whether those steps lead to UNC staying in the ACC or not? And do you think they're being proactive behind the scenes or kind of following the ACC's footsteps and sort of scanning the landscape and waiting to see what happens? I think it's a great question. You know, the fact that, that Jim Phillips was at Northwestern for so long as athletic director, you would assume he'd have some some insight into how the Big Ten operated uh, in, in this position, you know, over the last 15, 20 years. Um, the ACC has kind of been on the, the defense uh, in recent years. I mean, if you remember back 2014 when Maryland left, there was that $50 million exit fee that was whittled down in court. Um, but the ACC at that point in time said, look, we have to do something to protect our conference and all the schools, including UNC was really involved in that. And that's, that's what the grant of rights. And because the grant of rights is through 2035, 36, I think everybody in the ACC uh, doesn't have that sense of um, fear that they have to act very quickly. You know, the PAC 12, for example, their, their media rights deal is up in 2024. So they've got to move very quickly. The ACC has an extra decade in place or so people think, um, and so, while I think, you know, I'm sure Clemson, FSU, I know UNC, people behind the scenes are really making sure that they've got options on the table and they're not going to be surprised when any of this goes down. I, I do think the ACC is trying to figure out the best way to move forward. And I think there's only one path forward. And that's trying to convince Notre Dame to join as a full-time member in football. They already are in all the other sports. That's the only program nationally from a football standpoint that can move the financial needle enough to allow the ACC to compete with the Big Ten and SEC. I just don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, and of course, Notre Dame, the big fish of all realignment, right? And it does seem like, one, because of 
you know, geography and two, because of what the prestige of Notre Dame is. It seems like at least right now an ACC big 10 battle of sorts, if Notre Dame does decide to join a conference at all, which, you know, like you said, they're in the ACC for basically every sport except football, who knows what football will decide to do uh, for the fighting Irish, but you brought up the ACC grant of rights. You know, how does that kind of come into play with all this? Is there a way to get out of it? You know, if North Carolina decided that leaving for the Big Ten or the SEC was the best move for the future. Is there a way to, to make that move, or does it basically eliminate, or at the very least make any potential move just really difficult to do? It's certainly going to be a difficult thing to do. Um, and the ACC has done a very good job of keeping the grant rights wrapped up, so we haven't actually gotten our hands on the actual contract. I don't know that anybody has. The 2013 version um, has come out, and we've seen that but not the, the most recent one. I mean, essentially what it is is uh, when all the ACC teams signed this grant of rights, it was to strengthen and secure the conference through 2035-36. And all of the media rights and revenue through the ACC that were to go to a team are ACC property. And you know, so if Carolina, for example, were to leave for the Big Ten, then all of UNC's home games would go to the ACC. And all their media rights, all that revenue would go to the ACC. And so what it would really take is um, some team willing to challenge this in court. But the other component, too, is you know, if, if we look ahead, projections are for 2029, the Big Ten and SEC could be paying out roughly $120 million per program. Well, the ACC expected revenue is about $60 million. So even if North Carolina decides to leave and they'd have to pay back the ACC, they'd still probably come out ahead by making that jump. But it would just take a team to decide, hey, we're going to take this risk. We think it's better for our athletic department, for the university, to try it. And I really think if one team tries it, other teams will jump in. Uh, there, There is stipulation that we're aware of that if a majority of ACC teams decide to dissolve the conference, the grant of rights goes away. And so there's a lot of, a lot of talking behind the scenes about how to approach this. So, Greg, what do you think North Carolina's level of attractiveness is to these other conferences? I mean, look, they're an AAU member. They they constantly place high in the Directors' Cup standings. Obviously, the revenue sports succeed basketball more than football, but football still successful nonetheless. I would think after Notre Dame, which we obviously mentioned before, who's obviously the big fish in all of this, right? North Carolina has got to be in that sort of second tier of teams that either the SEC or the Big Ten would want. For sure. And first is the, the name brand, right? Um, I mean, when you talk about Michael Jordan and all that he brings with Nike, uh, that, that would be a big uh, feather in the cap, if you will. The other component, too, is that the state of North Carolina right now is a top 10 state in terms of population, and that's continuing to move up the ranks. I mean, outside of New York, every other uh, high profile state in terms of population is a member of either the SEC or Big Ten when you include now USC and UCLA out of California. Um, so the footprint is there. As you mentioned, all the Olympic sports is there. The brand's there. Carolina's had a lot of success pretty much in every single sport uh, beyond football. And football is kind of tracking in the right direction. So when you when you combine all those things, um, certainly North Carolina's got to be at the top of the list right behind Notre Dame in terms of you know, teams that the, the uh, Big Ten or SEC may want. And that gives North Carolina some, some leeway um, and some, some flexibility, but then you've also got a lot of the local ties and, and you know, that goes into making any kind of these decisions. So Greg, a few more from me before I let you go, how much do the traditional rivalries and the loyalty to those rivalries factor into this for UNC? You know, obviously no one would want Duke, North Carolina and basketball to go away and NC state and North Carolina and football, but that could be the case if, if they decided to bolt the ACC, does that matter at all in any decision the Tar Heels may have to make down the road? I think it does. And I think you look no further than Maryland. You know, when Maryland left in, in 2014, there's a lot of people in the, in the Maryland athletic community who were upset that they were losing, losing all those robberies. They got a ton of money and they are still getting a ton of money and they're well positioned, but just the tradition is not there. And I think you know, North Carolina, uh, they've got ties and robberies with a lot of teams you know, locally from Virginia, uh, NC state, Wake Forest, Duke, um, what happens to the, the Duke basketball rivalry? I mean, that's the most popular, uh, you could say, most popular college sports rivalry in the country. And then, of course, North Carolina and NC State are, are heated rivals that um, you kind of rank up there among a, a lot of the top ones in the country. On the flip side, however, you, the most recent financial data that we have from UNC 
coming out of the 2020-2021 academic year, his athletic department brought in $102 million in revenue. And as I mentioned earlier, projections for 2029 have payouts for the Big Ten and SEC up around $120 million. Uh, so roughly three times what North Carolina is getting now from the ACC. So that's really the conversation. You certainly will have the culture, the tradition people who want to maintain those relationships, but you also have the financial people who say, look, if we want to remain competitive at a national level, we've got to follow the money. So Greg, I'll get you out of here on this one. It's a two-part question. If North Carolina got their way in all of this, what conference do you think they want to be a part of in, let's say, three to five years? And then off of that, where do you personally think they'll be in the next three to five years? It's a great question. Uh, I think it's pretty evenly split amongst the fan, fan base in terms of the SEC and the Big Ten. I'm going to lean towards the Big Ten. You mentioned earlier uh, you, every Big Ten team except for Nebraska is an AAU school. North Carolina is as well. That's very important. The other component of this is that North Carolina has 28 sports, and the Big Ten uh, has that same number of sports that they that they play. Um, they use hockey. North Carolina uses fencing, but everything else is the same. SEC only has 21. So North Carolina would have to do away with roughly 25% of their Olympic sports. That's, that's, that's a big deal. Um, and then in terms of where I think North Carolina will end up being, um, I'm going to say the Big Ten. But I do think five years down the road, the Power Five teams will, will split off from the NCAA. And I think all these conferences are going to kind of be put together and we're going to see a brand new type of conference setup uh, that's not going to include the NCAA. And so we'll get away from names like the Big Ten and SEC is, is my belief. North Carolina, really an intriguing team to watch as realignment continues in college athletics. Greg, thanks so much for coming on and joining me. I really appreciate the time. Yep, sure thing. Thanks, Lance. Make sure to check out InsideCarolina.com for the latest on the Tar Heels. And don't forget to give the College Football Daily a five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. For Greg Barnes, I am Lance Glenn. Have a happy Wednesday, everyone. And thanks for listening to the College Football Daily.